So we're gonna do the peak brightness test for the Samsung QN85A. This is a 2% window stimulus. As you guys can see it right here, we're rocking, if I could ever get it to work, hold on. There we go, we're at 1255 on a 2% window stimulus. So that is ridiculously bright right there. And you guys can see my color meter is not moving or anything like that, okay? So now we're going to go to the next window stimulus. And again, I'm using the Spears and Munsell uh, UHD benchmarking disc, and I'm using my Xbox One X. As you guys can see here, this is something anyone can do. This is not some complex thing that only I can accomplish. And I like to create these kind of universal approaches to assessing picture quality and testing these things so that you can empower yourself, you know what I mean? So now we're going to go to a 10% window stimulus. I skip over the odd numbers like the 5 typically and some other ones just because uh, I'm, I'm used to the ones that I usually do. So we have 13... 100 nits right now, and that is on a 10% window stimulus. As you guys can see, it's holding pretty solidly. No issues whatsoever with that. And as you guys see, nobody's messing with the color meter or anything like that. And this is gonna give you the, again, just maximum amount of peak brightness that you're expecting here. And it's pretty confident about that number of 1300 nits. So there you go, that's your 10% window stimulus. So now we're gonna pull up our little menu here. It's easier if you have a Blu-ray player. I'm doing it the cheapest and easiest way I possibly can so that you guys see that this is a very simple thing to do and it doesn't need to be overly complicated. So again, just to reiterate how I'm doing this, Spears and Munsell UHD benchmarking disc, Windows, then go up to Peak versus Size using the X-Rite i1 Display Pro Color Meter and I'm using my Kalman Home Enthusiast software. You can't pick up the Home Enthusiast anymore, however, you can pick up your license of Kalman, and I'd imagine that you'd be able to test the dynamic range in the dynamic range section. Now, we go to our 25% window stimulus. We select that, and we let it ramp up. Now, the peak that I saw is 1,400 nits when it first came in there, and now it's dropping to 13. So what we'll do, I'll go back a window, and then I'll go forward a window, back and forward, to see if it'll show you that 14. It didn't pick that 14 back up, so we'll just call it at 1350 something, because that's kind of what it's doing right now. Okay, so now that we've got that out of the way, I'm gonna lower my ISO down, because it's just gonna get way too bright. It's kind of overpowering. Okay, so now we're gonna go to our next window stimulus, which I believe is the 50. I mean, you can go again left or right on the down pad on your controller as well to be able to go to the next one. I'm just doing it the way I'm doing it, just so you can visually see the stimulus. All right, so now it's 1277. That's what we're having right now. So not the lowest at all. It's pretty bright. Not quite as high as the 1600 nits, obviously, that we see on the QN90A, but again, the QN9DA does have its problems as well because of that extra brightness, so don't be deterred by that at all. And in fact, this is a pretty good showing for SDR brightness. Now, I'm not using the HDR variant right now. The next window stimulus will be a 75% window stimulus. Um, you can see that because the borders aren't completely filled in here. And we're just going to skip over this one and go straight to a 100% window stimulus where the whole screen is covered, where we're averaging 719 nits. And again, this is SDR, incredibly bright, but also I feel as though it may come as a bit of a deterrent because this might not be for everybody, right? So I think that's something to kind of think about when you're looking at this. So now that we see the SDR brightness, I'm going to enable the HDR variation and then we're gonna come back. Okay, so now we have HDR up and you guys can clearly see I'm in HDR movie mode. No games, no tricks, no gimmicks or anything like that. So we're just going to get started. Now, before we get started, one of the things I want to kind of put in perspective here is how I'm setting up the TV here. So I'm in the settings and I'm going to show you what I'm doing. No custom calibration or anything has been done. It's really just the default settings, but I maxed out the brightness and the contrast. And as you guys can see, we're in standard local dimming. Now, you can go into high on local dimming. And it'll slightly raise or lower your peak brightness, as you guys can see here, depending on what's on the screen. 
So for the most consistent results, I'm going to use standard. If you go to low, again, as you see now, it's darker. The standard is just the brighter one. So that's why we're using standard. We don't need contrast enhancer or anything like that. And we are on the standard color tone. I found when you go to cool, it really doesn't do anything. As you guys are seeing, it actually makes it a little darker, which is weird. There, like I was saying in many videos, weird things happen with this TV and it, it just can be funky from time to time. So I just wanted to show that part of it off, but okay. And also just so we can also make sure that you guys are, again, just doubly aware, we are in HDR. There's nothing to hide or to pull a leg with here, okay? So we're gonna go on our Xbox controller. Here's my Xbox controller. And I'm just going to go down to the 2% window stimulus. I'm gonna select it. It's gonna pull up here and it's gonna ramp up and down on a variable level. But our peak right now was 12, actually it's still rising, so that's pretty good. Uh, we were at 1266. Now I've seen as high as 1271 out of this on this particular window. So I kind of looked ahead and I know that that's as high as it gets, but it's holding to the 1260s fairly consistently. So for a 2% window, that's what it's going to be for HDR. So now then we're going to go back and it's a tedious process, but at least you'll know what the numbers and the figures are. We're going to go to a 10% window stimulus. It'll pull up here. We'll look at it in the program. 1335. That's what we're pretty much holding right now. So that's what we can say we're going to get on a 10% window stimulus. And then we're going to go back again, and we're going to find out what we do on a 25% window stimulus. So for the 25% window stimulus, it's going to come in, bam, and then we're going to look here, wait for it to ramp up, and there we go, 1359, that's where we are right now, 1358. And just to show you this is in real time, I'll move my mouse so you guys can see this is very open, very honest. There are, there are no, you know, attempts to hide anything from you. Nobody's moving the color meter. It's all right here. And I, and I go through such dramatic lengths to overprove what I'm doing here so you guys can see that this is not something that is incredibly difficult for anyone to do. You can go to the 50% window stimulus now. We're going to let that ramp up. That peak was at, I think it was like 12 something. I didn't really catch the opening of the peak. But there you guys see it right there, 1256 on a 25% window stimulus. And again, it will go up and down on a variable level, but consistently the 1250s is what it's holding, mid-1250s. 1256 is where it's at for the 25% window stimulus. And I expect that to fall off after a duration of time, but typically in content, especially real-world content, it just blasts in. And those highlights just kind of fly all over the place, so you don't really have the chance for it to fall off as fast anyway. So we're going to skip over the 75% and we'll go to the 100% window stimulus. And there you see 740. So there you go. That's basically what it's doing in SDR and HDR. They are pretty much identical, very similar. But as you guys can clearly see, when you when you have fluctuating color temperatures and and even right down to how you use local dimming, it can change the results in ways that you wouldn't expect with the Neo QLED. It's a very weird television. It does some weird things, but on the 100% window using my X right i1 display pro color meter, literally anybody anybody could buy that. It's it was like 250 bucks when I got it. Now the display pro plus is like 299, so you can pick that up. I mean, really, it's not a hard thing to do. It's not a hard thing to get. Get your Display Pro color meter, get your Kalman software. Your Xbox can play this off of the Xbox One S or Xbox One X in my case. And that's really all you need to test the peak brightness. So if you wanted to kind of pull off these tests yourself, and you didn't want to rely on artings or wait for somebody to publish an article telling you what the brightness is and being reliant on that. This is how you kind of get that independence for yourself. So hopefully showing how you can test the dynamic range of a television, the nit range, you can see what it is yourself. Hopefully that's helpful for you guys. If you like videos like this, smack a like on it. 
Thanks for watching the number one brand in honesty. And until the next video, I'll see you guys later.